Hi everyone, if you're new here, my name is Veronica and for the past few weeks I've been sharing um, my experience on taking the ADEX exam in 2020. Um, in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about how I prepared for the exam as a non-traditional candidate. So to me, a non-traditional candidate is someone who is no longer in the dental school setting. So someone who's not a DS3 or DS4, um, who has access to the clinical floor and who has uh, faculty members that are available to, to guide them. Um, and a little bit about me, um, I graduated dental school in 2016, so it's been a few years. I did a perio residency after that, and because my husband and I recently decided that we were going to move to North Carolina, I had to take the ADEX exam to be licensed in North Carolina. So I'm going to talk about a few big topics today, and the first is how I study for the diagnostic skill examination portion. So this is the computer-based exam. Because I didn't have a lot of study materials from when I was in dental school, I decided to buy a review book, the ADEX review book by Denton. I think with shipping and everything, it came out to about $150. Um, I reviewed the book twice through, and once I was done and passed the DSC portion of the exam, then I just kind of sold it on eBay. Do I think the Denton book is absolutely necessary? Um, I don't think so. I think if you have other study materials, like maybe notes from class and study materials from, you know, for the national boards exam, um, that might be enough. I chose to purchase the book because I just didn't have a lot of my resources anymore. Another thing I did was I reviewed a pretty old version of the dental decks for the national boards exam part two. I think my version was like maybe 2013 or something like that, but I went through um, the decks once through. I also reviewed the topics that were listed on Quizlet before the exam, and I think that was pretty helpful. So if you haven't checked out Quizlet, make sure to do so. And all you have to do is search either ADEX exam or CDCA, CEDA, something like that. So next, let's talk about how I practice for the clinical portion. So when I was preparing for the ADEX exam, I really didn't have a clinic to practice at. Like I was saying earlier, I, gra I graduated from dental school a few years ago, um, and I had recently resigned from my associate position. So I didn't have a clinic to physically practice at. Um, what I did was I found out that my alma mater, so the dental school I used to attend, they were hosting a review session for um, their current students that were preparing for REB because of you know the, the pandemic and everybody um, being in lockdown, their students weren't able to take REB when it was scheduled and it was postponed. So they held like a review session for, for their students to, to come in and to use their facilities and to be able to get feedback from faculty. I reached out to the person in charge and I introduced myself and I explained my situation, what ties I had with the school, and asked if you know I could potentially participate. Um, I offered to compensate the school for you know any materials I used, and thankfully they agreed to let me come back to school and use their facilities and, and prepare myself there. So all in all, I practice for three full days, um, so eight to nine hours a day and three consecutive days in a row. And that was the only time that I was able to practice for this exam. So besides physically practicing for the exam, the rest of my time was spent um, just watching YouTube videos of people prepping teeth and um, people doing class two and class three restorations. Stevenson Dental Solution was a really good resource. I also reviewed like the PowerPoints and lab manuals that I had from dental school. So if you are in a situation like me where you don't have a good place to practice at, I suggest first, you know, contacting your alma mater, the dental school you went to, 
um, or a local dental school where you live and you know just try to see if they are willing to accommodate you another option is to see if a just a general practitioner will let you come in and practice at their office one of my friends was kind enough to ask his boss if I could come and practice at their office and um, his boss ultimately said yes I didn't have to go to the office in the end but it was really nice to know that um, there are people out there that are willing to help. If you do end up going to a private practitioner's office to practice, remember that you should bring your own chair mount so that you can mount your Typodont to the dental chair. So now let's talk about renting versus purchasing equipment um, and instruments. I tried to rent as much equipment as possible just because I knew that I wasn't going to be using a lot of this stuff after the exam. Um, I was really fortunate in the fact that my testing facility offered rentals to candidates and they were very generous with their rentals. I was able to rent the operative, perio, restorative, um, and cross trays along with the hand pieces. And if we were allowed to use Captrons, that would have that would have been available. Um, curing lights. They also had a lot of disposable um, items available. I know this is not the case for every testing facility. Originally, I was signed up to take the exam with CDCA, um, but because I found out that they didn't offer the perio mannequin exam, I ended up taking the exam with CEDA. And the school that I ended up taking the exam at was very generous in what they were renting and what they were offering their students. Um, usually when you register for the exam, there's a facility information sheet and it sometimes lists what disposable items are available to candidates. If you have any question on to, as to what is available and what you should bring, definitely contact the person in charge. Usually there's a phone number or email um, to the person in charge that you can contact. Lastly, let's talk about registering for the exam. So earlier I mentioned that I was originally scheduled to take the ADEX exam with CDCA, but I later found out that that particular testing facility was not going to be offering the perio mannequin portion. And I wanted to take the perio mannequin exam. So I ended up going to the CEDA website and I found a location that I was interested in, but online it said that all the spots were completely filled. I took my chances and called the agency anyway and I explained to them my situation and they were actually very accommodating. Um, they were able to get me into the exam. And so if you are in that situation where there's a particular date that you want to take the exam, but online it's listed as unavailable, go ahead and call the agency anyway and see if, you know, they can somehow fit you in. It's definitely worth um, a phone call. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope this information was helpful. I also made a couple of videos describing my um, experience taking the ADEX exam. So if you have any interest in that, feel free to check those videos out. I'll probably also put out a few videos talking about residency, how to pick a residency program, what to look for in associateship agreements and things like that. So if you are interested in listening to that information, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and um, hopefully you'll get notified when those videos become available. Thanks for watching and take care guys.